mini breaks are a swirling nebula of nonsense. How can anyone go somewhere new and be expected to enjoy themselves without a decade to decompress? With no idea where to go, how to eat or what to do, it's impossible to stop the whole thing turning into a monumental fudge up. But do not tether yourself to a rack and rend yourself asunder, because I, a man who against all medical advice continues to call himself Richard Ayuadi, am going to massively sort it. Accompanied by a variety of medium to well-known faces, I'm going to take you hurtling through a foolproof maxi mini break. This is travel without mercy. Tonight, 48 hours in the imperial splendor of Vienna. Zwei Storm bitter. Over 13 million tourists waltz up every year to cop some culture, chow schnitzel, and sup at the city's famous coffee houses. In order to give the illusion of bonhomie, I will be joined by a travelling companion, the bearded actor Chris O'Dowd. <laughs> Together, we near scupper our souls in the pursuit of time efficient travel. I'm running a light, I'm running a light. Break down Vienna's must see attractions. Freud would have loved a lightsaber. And slip down a Freudian slope. <laughs> oh, I'm just so pleased it's not me. We're here, but should we have come? <laughs> Shut up. Vienna can be reached using any of the time-tested triage of train, coach and plane. But for the time-poor mini-breaker, only the latter compels. Chris. It's Chris, right? <laughs> um, so, have you been to Vienna before? Never. Never. I travel a lot. Yeah. I haven't had a holiday since our honeymoon. Well, yeah. Not our. Sure. We're still in our honeymoon period. Cursory chat concluded, I activate the B tourist for some restorative in-flight solitude. What is it for? It's to ensure privacy. I could see you, though. Where's that sound coming from? <laughs> I. It's like you're not here. Dicky! Oh. Dick! I'm so in my own world. After two spookily secluded hours, we've arrived here in Vienna, where, if you keep your spending game tight, a weekend can be secured for 250 UK sterling. Ah. So, Dickie? Yes, Chris? Here we are. We are here. You know I would go anywhere with you. I know. Why Vienna? Well, let me reward that earnest question with this answer. With around 2 million inhabitants, Vienna is home to roughly a quarter of Austria's population. And as if that fraction wasn't impressive enough, Vienna has also been voted the city with the best quality of life in the world four times. Something you would have thought could in no way be accurately surveyed. It was home to Mozart, Hayden, your boy Beethoven and your man Strauss, earning it the epithet City of Music. And that's pre-Ultravox, y'all. It was the birthplace of psychoanalysis, the sewing machine, slow motion and the best souvenir in the history of all time. Of which more in the Junus of course. In a city known for its opulent architecture, counter-suggestibility compels us to stay in a 1960s office block. Hotel Daniel has rooftop art, its own beehives and vespers for hire, as well as being one of the first results that came up after my Google search of Vienna plus popular Christian names plus hotel. Welcome to the Hotel Daniel. Ah. The Hotel Job was fully booked, so <laughs> we're here now. Hey, how are you? Hi, Good you? you must be Daniel. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> OK. Can we check in, please? Of course. The Daniel offers some unusual bunk-down options, and I've arranged something bespoke for Chris. Thank you, Daniel. You're welcome. Okay. I know how much you like to be next to a major highway. Um, <laughs> Where are we going? An exit. We're going? We're going to your quarters. Fifth. Yeah, room 777. Chris's room is 16 square metres of luxury 1952 Airstream Clipper. This is very popular with magpies. <laughs> In you go. That's really funny. Oh, bless I'm, you. It's just the first time that you've made me laugh. Oh, I know. Oh. You've got plenty of head height, right? Caravan. All right. Thanks, Dickie. The luxury Belvedere suite offers worldwide views of Vienna as well as a display hammock. But I have no time for display hammocks. Unpacking squanders time and is a bourgeois indulgence. The ride bag means I'm ready to leave the moment I feel the heat in the city. 
The clock's ticking. Yeah. We've got a lot to fit in. There's a lot of culture here. Should we just walk around the city at pace? I've got an idea that might even be better than that. The only obvious way to effectively blast all of Vienna's architecture into our eyeballs is to use miniature cars, perfect for two of the tallest men in light ends. These are your hot rods. These are my hot rods. Chris, that's your hot rod. <laughs> oh! Austria's worryingly relaxed vehicle laws mean these ludicrous dinkmobiles can be driven on actual roads amongst full-sized vehicles. Hey! It's the guy from the OT crowd. What? I presume what you're saying is facetious. All of this area that we're driving through right now is the first district, OK? I can only take a man in a tiny car so seriously. Our guide, Florian, will take us hurtling round one of Vienna's most exciting ring roads, past the Opera House, the City Hall and the Berg Theatre. This is St Stephen's Cathedral, guys. Lovely church. I think it was good to give that the seven seconds that that architecture deserved. You have very small, tiny little neat shops. Nice. Do you have Dixons here? No. Oh. No. They don't have a Dixon for it. A lot of antiques that they would have stolen during the war. And if you're going to sightsee at speed, you must renounce all fear of collision. Watch out for the trap. I'm running a light. I'm running a light. We're really rattling through this. We might be able to go back a day early. Our knowledge of Vienna has expanded profoundly, but as with many things that exist in time, the tour must end. Oh, wow. Can I be frank? I'd love you to be frank. I was impressed. I thought that the buildings are very old. That is an excellent observation. Very nice, very clean. It's like a it massive is... Guildford. Is there any higher praise than that? I really enjoyed that. Good. I'll not do it again. Yeah, as with many things you enjoy. Should we dismount? Yeah. With elegance. Oh. Oh. After the giddy rush of the open road, we are now in search of head food. Vienna is dense with over 100 museums, which is more than two times 50, or four times 25. We're off to the quarters of Vienna's favourite son, Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis and all-round phallocentric fun guy. The Freud Museum is set in the very building that was his office slash home between 1891 and 1938. It now attracts over 80,000 visitors a year. Here we are. Ah, Freud's Hall. <laughs> if that's not itself Freudian, I don't know. <laughs> On the walls, there is still the original decoration. He really... He really yeah. went for it, didn't he? Oh, gosh, it's a bit gaudy. This yeah. is where Good. he was for 40 years. This has... No, just this hall. He just couldn't get going. Much like us. Right. This is his waiting room, so this is where you would have waited. <sighs> had magazines and things like that. <laughs> he would have had, before, like, fishing weekly over he in the corner. popped in. All of this is alarmed. You mean psychologically? No, literally. As it was in Freud's time, <laughs> he took his security very seriously. The treatment room. Oh. That... I think this is called the hangman. It's a piece of art that they've just put in to brighten it up because <laughs> it can get a bit heavy. That's his couch. Lie down, enjoy yourself. Yeah. I'll be behind you. It's not strange if I play with your hair. <laughs> the gift shop. Ah. Oh. Banksy's favourite room. <laughs> Look, it's got an action figure. The hands move, so that's useful. Yeah, you can just transfer your lightsaber from your other toys. <laughs> Freud would have loved a lightsaber. Oh, I mean, that would was the make? ultimate phallic. Look at Darth Vader's helmet. <laughs> for reasons of ignorance, I'm unable to say where Freud did his food shopping, but for the sake of this link, we're going to pretend he definitely went to the Nash Markt. Vienna's famous historic market and a popular meeting place for locals and tourists. I've been here since the 16th century. 16th century? That's right. Oh, great. Where are you from? He's from Peru. Chile. And Chile. I'm from Chile. Oh, what are you doing here? We got lost. Falafel. Falafel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Chile. This is very nice. If you keep going up and down, you can, bait, you can get a meal out of it. These days, the market is a glut of global gastronomy, but we're here to sample a local libation. We're going to try some storm wine. Oh. Okay. It's partially fermented grape juice. Oh, I'm in. 
Hi. Hi. I'm fluent, so I'll handle this. Okay. Zwei Sturm, bitte. Zwei Sturm? Yes. Yeah. That's really Pretty good. Much, yes. Confident. It was. I think that's half the battle. It goes back to my days in the musical of Das Boot. Um, but the you were great in that. Do was, some of uh, the song from the end, because there are people who haven't seen that. We are going music. down, we are going downtown to the, in the bottom of the ocean. Thank you. Mm. The colour is very vibrant. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Danke. To better Tune. times. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's sweet, but really bitter. You cannot put a cork in the bottle because it will explode. Because the fermentation ain't done on this. Well, that's good, because you know, when I have wine, I always think, oh, it's too fermented. Yeah. Stewed on sturm fumes, our valves ache for the kind of appeasement that can only be provided by Austrian meat. I need Ketekleiner. <laughs> I know you need it now. <laughs> OK, good. Yeah? What's that? It's sausage. Oh. Ketekleiner. And I have this app on my phone a, here. Oh, you've got a mobile telephone. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. You just type in what you want, in this case, Ketekleiner, and it will take you to it. Do you have to be able to spell it? Let's get some Ketekleiner. <laughs> Austria tops the EU charts for per capita pork consumption, the only chart that counts. In short, Vienna's sausage game is off the hook. Oh, oh still open. Hey, Hi. zwei Kieselkleine bitte. Ja. Yes, this is sausage with cheese in it. That doesn't have cheese in it. Oh, it does. Look yes, that. look. The name literally means pussy stick. It's a shame. Thank you. That's really tasty. Yeah. I like cheese. I like sausage. What's the problem? There is no problem, except for your arteries, which I can feel furring up before my very eyes. I don't really know what you do with the bread. I think it's a lot like normal bread. I'm going to eat it, yeah. Yeah. And it's certainly helping to soak up the storm. <laughs> Shall we call this a night? and a victory for the pizza cleaner. <laughs> That's... OK. Working actor Chris O'Dowd and I have completed no less than 50% of our allotted 48 hours in the Austrian capital, Vienna. That's really tasty. Thus far, we have beheld its beatific buildings. I think it was good to give that the seven seconds that that architecture deserved. Prized open its subconscious. Look at Darth Vader's helmet and quaffed the local rock gut. Mm. It's not unpleasant. <coughs> like the conformists we are, we begin day two with what the Austrians continue to call breakfast. <laughs> Tourists and locals alike throng to the historic Café Central, which, in just one month, catered to Tito, Lenin, Trotsky, Freud, as well as hateful, evil fascist Hitler. Thank you. But we tried to block out some of the 20th century's worst crimes with Austrian staples Apple Strudel and Sasha Tort. Now, of course, uh, cake is a mainstay of Viennese culture. You knew that. <laughs> but Viennese people tend not to have cake for breakfast. Oh. But we are under time pressure, which is why we're having to chunder through this. Great. But you seem to have taken to it like a duck to water. I don't think this is the first time you've had cake for breakfast. Today. No. I've got to tell you. <laughs> no. Oh, dear. I think this is how Freud came up with all of those ideas. I think it was Sugar Rush. Well, this is why everybody had to lie on a couch for so long. Exactly. They just hit Café Central too hard that morning and remembered something that their mother may or may not have done. <laughs> <laughs> that was dynamite, Chris. But we can't tarry. No. We've got to catch our horse and cart. <laughs> now. Come on. Time's of the essence, Chris. Is this that's, us? That's horse. No time-efficient trip is complete without a ride on a fiaca. And, for the avoidance of doubt, Chris has been warned not to comically mispronounce fiaca for the duration of the trip. I'm allergic to horses, I've discovered. Yes, I'm noticing that My in your eyes. eyes are gone. I'm the horse shouter. Yeah. Like, there's so many horse whisperers. Wow. Get you, you fuck, It looks like I have you for the day at the moment <laughs> when you shout like that. 20 mins costs 55 euros and allows you to see the city while being pulled along by a horse, something my body cannot tolerate. They have some interesting 
headwear makes them look like they've joined the Ku Klux Klan. <coughs> oh, wow. I... <coughs> You're a very allergic person. That might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Fortunately for my immunointegrity, the Fiaca has reached our next destination, the Prata Amusement Park, home to Vienna's most famous landmark. It's also where Carol Reed shot some of the 1939 Oscar-winning noir thriller The Third Man, routinely heralded as the best British film ever made by people who haven't seen Maybe Baby. The Third Man tour takes in this and some of the film's other locations across Vienna. Our tour guide, Barbara, ushers us onto the Reisenrad, Vienna's iconic Ferris wheel. Lovely. Welcome to Harry's place. It's a very nice smell of wood. It's pretty sturdy. It feels sturdy. <laughs> right. So they shot the third man in here? Yes. Well, outside. What? Not inside. They did the exteriors. But I saw them inside. <laughs> the inside of the cabin was filmed in London Shepparton Studios. Oh. The guy that did the prop, he was Viennese, emigrating in 38 to London. So he knew how Vienna looked like and he knew how the wheel looked like. Okay. Much like the climax of the film, this tour finishes across town in the tunnels of the city sewer system. We're here to see the unforgettable location used in the film's final chase scene. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's the smell of raw sewage for you. <laughs> oh. I mean, I know it's not the same, but it's not unlike Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Wow. Smells sweet, doesn't it's, it? I'm more worried about the rats. That's why I'm, I'm just keeping on moving here. So this is where Orson Welles refused to come <laughs> when he was making The Third Man. Whenever you see his face, he was here. Right. Whenever you see his back or just his feet, it wasn't Orson Welles. OK, good old Orson. So how long does this tour last? Minimum of five hours. OK. Well, quick as you like. Let's wrap it up. OK. Okie dokie. <laughs> oh. Oh. Wow. Hey. Mixed feelings. That was... That was disgusting. ...everything you might expect from a sewer. <laughs> Any attraction where you need hand sanitizer at the end is something to, to think twice about. I feel like when you see the sewer system, it's like a city showing you its magic trick. Right. And that magic is how They've can we siphon off excrement as efficiently as possible? <laughs> Shall we leave? Yes, please. OK. Oh, sewers. Our third man tour was compelling, if acrid, but we need to massively get a wriggle on and hasten to our next destination. We're on a tram. We are on a tram. Uh, just had an idea. There we go. You have all of your ideas in German, don't you? I do. <laughs> you know what I'd like to get now, like, before we go? Tell me. Get, like, a souvenir. This is serendipitous because we're only going to the snow globe capital of the world snow globia the snow globe was invented in vienna 115 years ago a museum dedicated to their continuing relevance is run by erwin pertzi the third grandson of the inventor who guards the magical secret of the realistic snow with his life what is the snow in these globes uh, to tell the truth this is my secret what is it it, it's snow from my snow globes. It's actual snow. Yeah. Let's have okay. a look at some of them. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I lift that? Is that one yeah. liftable? Yeah. Okay. This is a. It's one... a little bit heavy. Be oh. careful because that's Just Jeremy Clarkson's. Just hold it on the glass, snow. please. Look at that. That is good quality um, fake snow. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> go. Oh. oh. <laughs> that's a crying shame. Oh, everyone, I'm so sorry. I'm just so pleased it's not me. I can't lie. I want to feel bad for you, but the relief that that wasn't me is so great. That Drop is... it. Oh, oh, careful. OK. Yeah. Oh. Now you can see the it's magnification. Okay. If yes. you remember how, the, how big the car was before. I've got to say, I'm in such a state of shock, <laughs> yeah. I can't really remember anything. I don't even remember who you are. Okay. I don't know why I'm here. Yeah. I just know we've done something bad. <laughs> And it wasn't my fault. Okay. Shall we look through? Okay. Let's look at the other room of breakable. Okay. Shall we, Owen? Okay. Okay. 
Here we go. Oh, crumbs. In order to harness the potential for fresh disgrace, I resolve to see if there's any more valuable glassware in the joint worth scoping out. And there ruddy well is. A snow globe from Orson Welles' masterpiece, Citizen Kane. My grandfather made the snow globe for the movie. I mean, yeah. this is good. And uh, this is a replica. I'm just saying don't do a stock inventory tonight because yeah. as soon as your back's turned, I'm taking this. <laughs> I'm taking the snow globe. I'm going to be right up front. Is it just normal water? Yeah. Austrian Alpine water. Oh. What a city. What a city. Well, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> do you blow the glass yourself? No. 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 <sighs> this is... Idiot. <laughs> The glass globe we buy from a glass factory. The snow you make with? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I oh, do. I do. Yeah. God, you're yeah. good. I would like to remind you, you have something in your pocket. Oh. I have no idea what I you're think talking you just about. to see you. And you're being very passive aggressive. <laughs> okay? Which I don't appreciate. But it's lovely to meet you. Um, there's nothing in my pocket. You have a vandal in here. You need to deal with that. I'll see you later. Okay? Thank you so much. I'll see you later. It was a pleasure. Souvenirs now secured. Taking the spend on our Viennese world to just over £500 apiece, it's surely time to definitively assess the city's suitability as a two-day destination. To do this, we have come to a tributary of the River Danube, Europe's second longest river, which Wikipedia tells me flows through ten countries and four capitals, and don't even get me started on its drainage basin. To ensure solitude for our final foray, I have, of course, charted a battery-powered self-driven island. Cheers. Chin -chin. What have you enjoyed most about Vienna? I liked it a lot. Okay. I thought it was very clean. It is clean. Nice. It is nice. I like the hotel. The hotel was dynamite. I had my caravan. I very much liked the third man tour up until we got to the sewer bit of it. Yeah. I love the Freud Museum. I could have stayed in there for minutes. Thank you for joining me. I know it was in your contract, but thank you for honouring it. Cheers, Dickie. I'd like to give you something to remind <laughs> you of the Snow Globe experience. It's not broken, so it's a novelty in and of itself. And every time you shake that, you can remember how you broke that man's globe and heart. I just realised what he's made the snow of. It's dandruff. It's just old man dandruff. That schnapps has gone to my head. <laughs>